I'm throwing my 23 years of art experience out the window so I can start from scratch. I spent three years drawing almost nothing and I barely picked up a pencil. See, I had something called depression. I blamed the pandemic. Once I finally saw the light at the end of the tunnel, my friends convinced me to start posting again. And I really couldn't thank them enough. But I lost a lot of skills that I developed over the years and I didn't know where to start. So I'm gonna make this my start. I'm going to spend the next 100 days drawing every single day. I'll dive into the basics of drawing, character designs, expressions, color, light, and shadow. I would love for you to do this challenge with me if you would like, and I will be live on Twitch while I draw. So don't be afraid to join so we can draw together. Enough with the small talk, let's get started. This video is all about form. What the heck do I mean by that? Psh, I don't know, but we're gonna learn together. After extensively filtering through the internet, because the internet can never be wrong, right? I found two definitions. From drawpantacademy.com, Dan Scott says, form and structure refer to the use of visual elements to convey three-dimensional objects on a flat surface. This could be done through methods such as shading, contrast, or contour drawing. And from CG Spectrum, they say, at their core, all objects comprise of a mixture of basic shapes. Squares, circles, and triangles, or in three dimensions, cubes, spheres, and triangular prisms. Form and structure help flat drawings appear more realistic, and as though they occupy a space in width and depth. Pretty good definitions, right? Let's dive into this a bit further. From what I've learned in art school, it helps to think of everything as its form. For example, a banana is not a banana. Don't you dare think of it as a banana. It's simply a shape emphasized by color, lighting, and shadow. If you think of a banana as a banana instead of its core form, it's a lot easier to get it wrong. Our brain doesn't remember bananas very well, but we remember basic shapes a lot easier. A lot of people can't draw from a photo or reference because of this issue, and I don't think this is talked about enough. If you sketch over your reference, you can see a lot of basic shapes going on, which is why I made this analogy in the first place. Okay, okay, I'll stop talking about bananas. Let's go ahead and bring in a pretty lady, because I know that's what you all want to see. You guys need to touch grass. <laughs> Look at that beautiful face. Her gorgeous dome is a circle, maybe an oval, and her hair is a bunch of triangles connected to her scalp, this point here. The eyes are simply circles with a few arches attached. Her nose is a triangle. Her mouth is a line with a few arches and her neck and shoulders are a bunch of cylinders. I spent the first two days doing this challenge trying to be my perfectionist self. I wanted to fully complete each piece, but I soon found out in order to keep up with drawing every day, plus working on other projects on top of that, it would require me to put in a lot less work. By that I mean not rendering. Just doing the sketch and line art with a few grayscale color blocks will be enough for you. Even then, that's just going above and beyond. The sketch alone is just fine. For the first 10 days, I wanted to practice on a bunch of different things. You can draw whatever you want, just try to keep it as close to the references you choose as you can, because we're trying not to go outside of the references, we're trying to learn from life right now. I decided to do a landscape on this day, basically because I don't do a lot of detailed backgrounds and I need to get that practice in. Of course, I started out by tracing the basic shapes of the landscape, then I went in and stupidly rendered this thing to the max. It's like I'm trying to impress all of you when in reality, I'm sure you don't care whether or not it's a sketch or a finished piece because I don't want you guys to do this challenge thinking, oh, I need to draw every day and they need to look absolutely perfect like I did. Really, just a quick sketch will do just fine. Regardless, I really like how this turned out. The lighting matches the reference pretty well and also the orange is really pleasant to look at. Day three is when I finally figured out that more work does not equal more progress. Again, a sketch can go pretty far. All I did was the sketch and the liner with some basic grayscale shaping. This way I could actually focus more on the shapes, which is the whole point of these first 10 days. While I was working on this, I realized some of the wrinkles and folds of the dress kind of merged into each other in really weird ways. Because of that, I started wondering if this was AI, which it very well could have been. Lately, Pinterest has been riddled with AI quote unquote art. It kind of sucks, but whatever. I tried to improvise where I could. As I'm going through these daily drawings, I'm noticing that I'm not really drawing these basic shapes correctly, which is completely my bad. I mean, I'm learning along with you guys, so it's understandable. I'm not sure if I wanted to capture the details more than the actual basic shapes, because again, I am a perfectionist. I try and do everything as maximalist as possible. I just can't keep it simple. But I really did like this reference. She looks so happy and carefree, and I really love drawing her. Okay, I think this was one of my favorite drawings out of all 10 of them for this challenge. I just love how these hands turned out. 
Out of all these drawings, I think this was the closest to the reference proportion-wise, which honestly, so proud. It's weird too, because I hate drawing hands. I'm sure most of us do. I mean, hands are our Achilles heel. It's just due to the fact that they're so complex. I mean, there's 27 bones in your hand alone, so understandable. Your hands can move in some strange and complex ways as well. So it's, it's, it's just really hard to draw is what I'm saying. Hands are hard. What's learning how to draw without drawing the skull? <laughs> so that's what I did for day six. On another note, I've heard that drawing the full skeleton actually improves your art pretty drastically. I've heard stories from other artists having to do something like this in art school, which I unfortunately didn't have the chance to do when I was in art school. They would draw the entire skeleton and then put the muscular structure on top of that, and then the skin on top of that. It would take them months, but from all the artists I've talked to that have done this, it definitely is something to do to improve your art, which uh, we might be able to do in a future video. I don't know, it just depends on what you guys want. Might be something fun to do. So for day seven, I am dabbling with little kitty cat. I saw this photo on Pinterest and I just couldn't resist drawing them. The woman and cat looks just so cute together and it looks so peaceful and relaxing. And it was so fun to draw. Um, I kept it simple as I've learned uh, is the best practice for these kinds of studies. And honestly, I think this was one of my faster pieces. You'd think this trend would last where each piece would get faster and faster as I go on, um, but it was not. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get a bit faster at drawing soon, but I'm still slow as a snail when it comes to these things. Usually these pieces take two or three hours with just the sketch and line art alone, so I'm definitely going to try and get faster in the future. So we're doing another landscape for day eight. I'm growing on landscape pieces to be completely honest. Landscapes are a lot easier to get right because humans have such an advanced facial recognition. So we have to be very careful with drawing faces. Just a tiny line out of place will make the face look odd or badly drawn. However, landscapes, you can put a bunch of random shapes and colors and it will still look like a landscape. I know we aren't focusing on value for this video, but I love how the value turned out for this piece. The dark and light colors work together super well. So I'm really happy about that. I kind of gave up on day nine. I was feeling a bit burnt out. No matter how hard I tried, I could not get this one right. It's all good though. If you do this challenge with me, things like this will happen. Art doesn't just work every single day and you can't force it. So I let day nine go as a break day. I tried, you know, that's all that matters. So it's now day 10, the final piece before we dive into perspective, which personally is my hardest fundamental. I have never gotten a grasp on it, so I'm really looking forward to getting better at it. It will allow me to do a lot more without references and oh, I am so tired of having to rely on references for every single one of my art pieces. It's getting really annoying, but no shame if you still have to do that. If you went along with me for this challenge, remember those basic shapes. When I learned this during my very first drawing class while in art school, it stuck with me and I have not forgotten it since. Because I have it ingrained into my brain, I can draw pretty much everything from a reference without tracing it. Obviously, it takes a lot of work, a lot of practice, and a lot of crying. But once you get there, it's with you for life. Soon, everything will look like basic shapes instead of just a banana. It's a great worldview to have, to be honest. If we dive deeper into this, it actually gets even more than just art. Uh, you start to see life simpler with all of the symbolism attached because you're just seeing everything as a basic shape, right? You see people and can see all of their beautiful features because you can see those basic shapes. You see your husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, or partner and all of those gorgeous curves and edges. They're perfect imperfections. You can see the similarities of your face with your children if you have them. You could see your pets a bit differently too. You can see their big eyes and their cute little paws. If you see the world in basic shapes. You can see details as well. It makes the world a bit brighter or a bit darker, depending what you're focusing on. If you can see basic shapes instead of just the banana, you can draw anything you could ever want or desire. The only catch is you might need a reference, but that reference could be the world around you or the people who love you, the house you live in, yourself, or hmm, pictures off the internet. This is only the first 10 days out of the 100 day challenge that we've created for ourselves and more videos are coming soon. Don't forget to join the Discord so you can post your art and be part of a wholesome and chaotic community full of artists and animators alike, link in the description. And if you've made it to the end, make sure to give that like button a good pat. It helps a lot more people see this video and I want to help as many people learn to draw as I possibly can. If you want to become part of the Subscribles crew, click that subscribe button. We would love to have you here. See you next video. Bye bye.